Now if I run this and I press my spacebar, there are blobs appearing and they move forward. And if I rotate, now they always move to the right, so they don't actually take the rotation into account. Um, that is missing. And the other thing that we see is that there's actually, every time I press the spacebar, a whole string of blobs appearing, not a single one. You know, every time I get a whole lot of blobs. So these two problems I want to solve next. Let's first solve the problem of the multiple blobs appearing here. So if we look into the Canon um, class, that is where the blob gets created. The problem is that every time I press the space bar, as long as the space bar is being held down, um, I'm firing and new blobs get created. And even if you press the space bar only a very short moment, the act method gets called very, very quickly. So if I press the space bar once, the act method still gets called so quickly that it that it executes maybe five, six, seven times. So every time I press the space bar once, I get five, six, seven blobs being created because as long as the key is held down, I'm firing and that you can almost not press the key short enough to get only a single um, blob being created. So the solution for this is not to use the is key down method, but because the is key down method by definition does things repeatedly as long as you press this down. If I want to do this only once, I um, use a different method. I say instead green for get key um, and the get key method gives me a key that was pressed on the keyboard, but it gives me that key only once. So I can say if green for get key dot equals space. So I can say, okay, Greenford, give me a key, and if that was a space, then I fire. The get key method, as opposed to is key down, will give me every key exactly once. So this is almost correct, except that there is a problem now because get key will return null if no key was pressed. So if I say Greenford get key um, and no key was pressed, Greenford dot get key will give me null as a result back. And if I get null, I cannot call equals on it. Then I will get a null point exception because I can call equals only on an object and not if I have null. So this construct here looks harmless enough but will give me a lot of null pointer errors. A nice trick to do that is just to turn that around and put the space at the front and just say if space dot equals Greenford get key um, because now I'm taking the string object with the string space and there's never null because that is an object and I say if that equals what I'm getting from Greenford dot get key then I fire and Greenford dot get key may be null but passing null as a parameter to equals that is okay so let's try that out I run this again and here, every time I press space now, I get exactly a single blob firing out of my cannon. Okay, we see the blob always flies exactly to the right, um, so the rotation of the cannon is not taken into the account, because when we create the blob, we don't actually change its rotation. Uh, the orientation of an actor initially is always to zero degrees, and zero degrees is straight to the right. So here, what I can do is just very easily um, I take my blob and I say set rotation and I take the rotation of the cannon so get rotation because remember I'm here in the cannon class get rotation gives me the current rotation of the cannon and then I set the rotation of the blob to the same rotation that the cannon head. Let's try that out. And now if I run this and I turn the cannon on and press my spacebar, now the blob um, flies in the right direction. Okay. One little thing that is not so nice is if you look very carefully, you see that the blob actually appears in the middle of the cannon. So every time, if you look here very carefully, now press the spacebar, the blob comes from here. What I actually would like is I would like it to come out here of the end of the cannon. Um, that is quite easy to do because I can just, um, when I initially insert it into the world, 
move it a bit forward after rotating it into the right direction so that when the cannon faces this way it gets after rotating it into the right direction just move it forward by the distance of about half the size of the cannon and I know that the cannon is about 80 pixels um, long I know that because I've just painted it before in Photoshop and I paid attention so here after setting the rotation of the blob I just say blob dot move um, 40.0 I just move it forward by 40 um, pixels oh. so let's try that out I run that again rotate my cannon I shoot and now the blobs come out the end of the cannon okay there we have our shooting already so our ketchup cannon can shoot ketchup blobs the last thing I want to do is I want to make the blobs um, splatter onto the background here um, and that is fairly easily done it's not a very difficult thing that is now something that happens in the blob because as soon as the blob leaves the cannon as soon as it is created into the world the cannon doesn't know anything about the blob anymore so the cannon is actually done going into my blob now the blob class currently only moves forward and so what I want to do is I just want to give it some life you know some some lifetime some kind of time that it moves forwards and when that expires it should turn into the splat so I create here a variable uh, an instance field it can be an int it's a counter and I call it life that counts the lifetime and then how long should it live I want the um, uh, the ketchup blobs to fly not always exactly the same distance but it's a somewhat varied distance so I, I put a bit of random in here I say greenfoot dot get random number and I want um, every blob to go forward for somewhere between 10 and 20 steps so I'm taking a number out of 10 a random number out of 10 and I'm adding 10 a constant so I get always at least 10 and then I'm adding something between 0 and 90 so I, I'm getting here a random number between 10 and 19 that's okay so that's the life and then I say here in the act method I move forward and then I decrement my life by 1 and I say if my life is down to 0 then it is time to disappear and turn into a splat and doing that um, is quite easy I just create a splat object I say get world dot add object new splat and the location where I put the splat is exactly my own location so I take my own x and y coordinates as the location where I put the splat in and the next thing I need to do just one more thing is to remove the blob itself because I want to um, insert the splat instead of the blob so I just say again get world dot remove object and the object I want to remove is this so I return I remove the blob itself and that is all so if you look at that again I'm giving a sort of slightly random life amount and I say every time I move I decrement life and when I'm down to zero put a splat object in and remove myself let's try that out so here I run this can rotate my cannon and I can fire and every time I fire a blob of ketchup flies out and splatters onto my background and you see the distance that it flies is a little bit random okay that was it for today this is the whole principle how you can make a cannon shoot in Greenfoot um, to summarize the idea is just to every time you want to shoot to put a bullet object in this case a blob into the world at the point where you want the shot to start and that bullet then has an act method that moves itself forward until something happens until it hits something usually or until it reaches the edge of the screen and that is it for today thanks for listening bye bye